Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about NumPy. NumPy is one of those very important modules that for data analytics with programming or data science is becoming more and more important. There are a few things that we will need to set up before you can start doing actually some codes for yourself. I actually highly encourage you to multiple times throughout this video but also throughout all of the videos that you would be watching from me in this course to be stopping your videos and do what you did on your own computer and see if you can get the same results. I highly discourage you from watching these videos just by uh, watching them as, as if you're watching a TV show. Uh, you want to actively watch this video and by meaning active I mean by stopping the video every now and then and give what I just did a try yourself. So we're just going to jump to Jupyter Notebook um, environment and take it from there. Okay so now we are in the Jupyter Notebook area. So we did see, uh, we did watch a video about Jupyter Notebook and we have a somewhat of an understanding of what different things here are. So don't go over them again. If you haven't watched that video, go back and watch that video. So before I get started on uh, this you know, file, I want to tell you about two different things that you might be seeing throughout this course. When you watch my videos, in my videos, if you look at all of my codes, they're already typed in and they're ready for me to start talking about. So these are the codes that I will be talking about throughout this video. And as you can see, all of these are already uh, filled in and most of the codes that I need to be explaining are already put there. But I'm not going to be sharing this file with you. The file I'll be sharing with you will look like this. Um, all of the structure of the file is in there but the code parts are not there and the reason I'm doing that is the act of typing in those codes are also a part of your learning and it's going to significantly help you to become more and more comfortable with analytics using computer programming. Okay so before we start here go ahead and make sure you have pulled up uh, this file on your own Jupyter Notebook and once you're ready, and then you continue watching. Go ahead and do it. All right, so now that you have your Jupyter Notebook open, I'm gonna go scroll up and start talking about these different parts of this page. So non NumPy. NumPy is basically short for number Python. Some people also call it NumPy. Uh, potato, potato. It doesn't really matter. I call it NumPy, and most of the people I know call it NumPy. But if you like NumPy better, uh, have at it. But NumPy or NumPy, uh, this is a very useful module. Whenever you have any uh, work with type any arrays or numbers, so basically as the name stands, it's a collection of functions, classes, objects that has already been developed in the Python um, environment for you or for anyone in the world to freely be able to use those functions and um, programming objects basically. So it's basically a collection of functions if you will. Basically someone has written those functions somewhere you all you need to do is say okay I want to use those functions and those functions are at your uh, finger. One, a couple of things to pay attention before uh, we get started here is that uh, it's normally written as NumPy. It's, uh, this is the way it's written. But when you actually import NumPy, you import it with just lowercase. Um, so it's NumPy. You don't have to, you can't uh, put any other thing. It has to be lowercase. And in the... Um, Data science community, every time you import NumPy, you name it as NP. So any, whenever you see in a Python code NP dot something, that means that somewhere before that line of code, 
uh, that developer must have had imported uh, NumPy. So that's what that means. Another thing you want to pay attention here is the fact that uh, before on previous modules, um, this module were named numeric or num array. Please don't use those. Use numpy. That's the uh, most current uh, module that uh, is up to date and it works very well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with actually doing some code. So as you can see, every time we want to work with a module, what we have to do first is to import the module. Like I said, uh, we import uh, NumPy as NP. So once we have that, um, now I can uh, say NP dot, and there are a collections of functions I can be using. So here, the very first function we use here is dot array basically this function what it does it takes a list or possibly other types of things and they they spit out or the output or it output an um, numpy array so here we go so let's let me run this once i run this um now what i had here was a list of list but now i have an array so what is the type of my array? It's NumPy array. So every time you want to see what it is that you have, um, you can use the function type. So pay attention to the difference here. We had a function, NumPy array. This is a NumPy function. I would not have been able to use this function had it not for the fact that I imported Python. But there's also other types of function that there are built-in Python function. These functions are built-in in Python. So you can use them uh, no matter if you, uh, if you open Python, now you can start using them. So it tells me the type of uh, object we have on my array is NumPy array. I could also look at the shape of uh, my uh, array. So here, I'm looking at one property of the NumPy array. So if I say dot something without parentheses, it's a property of that object, which is here is NumPy array. So the property of this NumPy array is shape. It tells us the shape of our array. It says we have five rows, one, two, three, four, five, and we have five, four columns. One, two, three, four. So that's our shape. And then we could also say size, and size is another property which tells us the number of elements in the NumPy array. So we have 20 elements here. I could also be using len, L-E-N, that is short for length, which is a Python function to see the uh, length of my array. Basically, uh, when you say len my array, it's basically tens, whichever number is greater in the um, shape. So whichever side is longer, it's going to uh, show that number to you. Uh, so like I said, there are many different advantages from list to uh, array. And one of the one of the one of them is the fact that you could now access these uh, values much easier than a list. So I could say I want to access my array. Uh, I want uh, the first row and then the second column. Pay attention here. Um, when you work in Python, the counting always starts from zero. So basically, um, if I want to count um, or index my rows here, this is my row zero. This is my row one. This is my row two, row three, and row four. So pay attention, we had five rows, but it starts from row zero, row two, row three, and row four, and row five. And then the same thing for column, column one, column two, column three, and column four.
my bad i have to backtrack column zero column one column two and column three so let's predict what we're going to get if i were to run this if i were to run this i would get a member of um row one so this is row zero this is row one so i will be getting one of these numbers and column two column zero column one column two so i'm predicting we'll get number seven let's go ahead and see if we'll get number seven there we go um we could also collect um one or result or output a whole row so if i say my array two it will output the whole row two so i have row one row two i'm sorry row zero row one and row two so if i run i will get this output so let's see it all right nine ten eleven and twelve I could also uh, be getting the individual um, members of array by a very simpler um, way. I could just basically say bracket uh, the row number and the column number and it will give me that exact one. So let's check it here. We have call row three, this was correct, row three here, one, zero, one, two, three, and then column two zero one two so we got 15 which is correct and um, here i could reproduce this number seven by using the other way of notation and i get number seven so don't forget to stop the video and do these uh, on your own so probably i will just keep going throughout this video and next videos but let this be a reminder that for you it's going to be much better if you tried all of these things that I do in this video for yourself on the side, on the window. Stop the video, go there, type in, see what, what you get. If you get an error, try to figure it out and then come back once you have the same results. Okay, moving on. So uh, NumPy also comes with other very useful function um, that we, we always use in other uh, uh, programs or other software such as Excel, uh, Minitab, and all of those things that helps us work with numbers. NumPy provides all of those things for us for free. So, for example, I could be saying np.sum, and basically I want the sum of all of the members of my array. So if I say this, now it will sum up all of these values right at once for me by just uh, typing what I want and just clicking and I get that result very simple and um, so this could be done in two different ways um, so there are two ways to call um, a function so you could go from the root of the numpy uh, module and say I want to work with this function mp dot sum so once you go from the root now this function requires you to have an input for it which is what is it that i am summing basically which we say okay i want my array to be summed up there's another way you could go about this is by uh, going from your array so going from the root uh, module you say my array and then this sum which is a function is another property of the numpy array and because this already knows what array is it is that i want to sum i don't need to input anything here and i just run it and i have the same thing one thing you may not know about python is when you put pound sign before a line basically it tells python what that line is not a part of your developed code. Basically, that line is a comment. A comment is not going to be compiled. A comment is used for you to keep something embedded in your code uh, for your own remembering or for communicating with another developer or to communicate with yourself in the future. Uh, so use that comment for different purposes 
but um, basically what comp compiler or Python compiler will do to it is just going to ignore it. So here uh, it just ignores this one and run this one. So uh, it's just basically my way of saying to myself that these are the same thing. Um, you could be using the same thing. Um, another function it has, it's minimum and maximum. So I can get the minimum of my array or switch these pound sign and get the maximum. Maximum is 20. I could also get the mean or the average, and I could be doing it uh, by uh, doing um, from my getting the function as a property of my NumPy array or getting it from the root of the module. And it's going to give me the same answers. Another very useful function is the function called arrange. Uh, basically, let's just go ahead and run it and see what it gives us. Basically, what this function does, it gives us a sequence of number from 0 to that specified number. Um, so basically, uh, it gives us to n, n plus n minus 1. If this is n, it's going to be n minus 1. If we pass only um, one number, it's going to start from 0 to uh, uh, that number minus one if we pass two numbers it's going to start from the first number and it's going to end by the second number minus one so if we run this it's going to give us from five to nine and we could also specify the type of these values we want to be creating so if i say float now it's assuming it, these are floating number if i don't say or if i say um int is going to give us the integer. So if I'm just going to go ahead and change this float, so there is a possibility we know if you want to do the float. Another important um, aspect of arrays is the fact that you could be using NumPy array for slicing. So for example, here um, I have created an array of um, from 0 to 19 by np data range. Now I can slice this array with many different ways. So for example, I could be saying that I want to slice this array um, in a way that I want to start from um, the first position or position number one and take numbers on every third jumps so here this is index one index index zero index one so it gets this one and every third one i'm going to have another number so one two three four one two three seven one two three ten one two three thirteen one two three sixteen 1, 2, 3, 19. So, here's a trick question. What will this do? So, when you put a negative in your slicing code, it basically reverses the movement. So, if plus 1 moves from, any plus moves this way, negative plus, negative move, um, the other way so it's going to start from the position the first position of when you don't specify it's going to be position zero and then it goes one by one backward so basically it goes to zero uh, it's not going to show it's going to go to 19 18 17 16 so basically this little piece of code reverses your array basically it reverses your array There are other useful functions that we'll go over quickly. So one of them is zeros. Basically, you could create a, an array with a specific shape. Um, all of them, all of the elements of the array are zero. So it has a one-dimensional array, all of the elements zero, uh, 10 elements of zero, or you could give it a shape, five by 10 array. 
and all of them are zero. You could be doing the same thing with ones. Instead of filling up, filling these up with zero, it does the same thing, but this time it they they fill them up with one. And the data type also can be specified as it's shown here. Another useful function is line space. Line space basically gives you a sequence of numbers from the first number to the second number by equal increments. If you want to calculate what increment is going to be, it's going to be b minus a divided by c. So if I say I want um, line space between 0 and 1, it's going to find 101 numbers between 0 and 1. And it's just going to output that. It's a very useful function for a lot of um, analytics. Uh, this very simple function. So now I have um, 101 number that are equally spaced between 0 and 1. Another useful function is sorting. You could be sorting um, any array uh, using um, NumPy. So if this is my array, which I just created, if I say mp sort, it's just going to sort the array for me. So it's, it's the smallest one, and then the, the second smallest, and so on and so forth. What if I wanted this to be descending, as in the uh, biggest number or the greatest number comes first. Do you remember the trick we had? All you need to do is to use this little trick and uh, slice the array that way. Now you have your descending sort. A lot of times what we want is not really the output of the source, but what we want is really the location of the largest number and then the second largest number. So for example, here, um, what is the smallest number? The smallest number is, it is indeed two. But where does it occur? It occurred at location zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it occurs at the location seven. So sometimes we are more interested in knowing which index of the array is leading to um, that smallest value or the second smallest, third smallest, and so on and so forth. If you're interested in that, which most of the time we are, um, we use argsort. So basically, um, let's just do one with the usual sort and now I want to get those indices so if I if I do use the np.arg sort instead of np sort it gives me those indices so once I run this uh, this is my uh, array that I, I just you know sorted and then sorted indices as I as I as I showed you the, the smallest value is second which is in the seventh index and then we have five which is zero one two three so this is the sorted um, array this is the indexes of the sorted array uh, so these are the printed and this is also how I could actually sort the array so it's sort of like um, sorting it by one intermediate steps first we find the sorted indices which is tells us which those basically tells us where are the smallest to the largest values and then we reshuffle our array by passing that into brackets basically it reshuffles it and now we have our sorted array the next thing we have is perhaps one of the most applicable, simple, and yet powerful programming techniques that you could be using in Python. It's called Boolean masking. So pay attention here. You, you do want to listen here because if you get this, this is going to 
uh, change your programming level from here to here just in a second if you get it so basically what you do when you do boolean masking you create a mirror array that all it has is zero or one with the same number of elements as your original array so basically let's say i want those zero ones to be either um, one if that value in my array is larger than 50 if it's not it's zero so i go ahead and create this boolean mask if the value is greater than 50 it's true if it's not this is true then true and if it's not this is false so basically if you have 10 how many do we have here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so if you have 15 members uh, your boolean mass also will have 15 true and false so now that you have these true and false you could basically um, without the part of array that you're not interested so if i say array bm and pass this boolean mask it basically keeps only the ones that has led to a true which is uh, the numbers are greater than 50. so once i run this now it keeps only those ones for me so imagine i wanted to calculate the average of all of the numbers in an array that are greater than 50. this would have taken a long time if you were to do that calculation let's say by excel but here all you need to do is write your boolean mask and boom you have the answer here so let's go over one simple example here and see how this can actually be applied so um, here for you to be able to actually um, uh, run this code you have to have uh, this file that i have provided on moodle um, on the same folder as you have uh, this file that you're running so if you look at uh, my folder here uh, this is this is my the, that file and this is uh, the file that i'm running right now for you so because they are in the same folder i am going to be able to uh, run this code so um don't worry about these um, other stuff here just type them as i have typed type them here we will learn a much easier way to read data later on in this course but for the purpose of doing a little bit of practice here just go ahead and type down what i have here once you do this it basically gives you uh, the stock price of Apple in the last year. So you have those stock prices of Apple in the last year. And now I have these values. And I want, for example, to print the first five highest closing stock price. So first thing I need to do here, um, among these all values, I, I need to uh, sort them. So I go ahead and sort them, and uh, I remember when I do just sort, it shows the smallest one first. So for me to be able to sort of reverse this, I use uh, my um, R trick that reverses the array. So now it's from the largest to smallest now i only am interested in the first five numbers and once i run this now it gives me these first five numbers you can see um, this data is coming in some sort of a weird format of this having a comma and in parentheses um, this has to do with the way this data has been saved but we could go ahead and simply get rid of this 
Uh, so here we're gonna show I'm gonna show you how to get rid of these commas. One thing you could do first of all create a placeholder by MP0. Do you remember MP0? So I'm creating um, a new array that all of them are zero with the same number of um, elements as the input stock price array which was the apple stock prices that we read here you can see this length len uh, does that for us so once i have that now i use a loop uh, to reassign all of those elements so i go through this loop and every time i have one of these elements see so the first one will be this one every time i have that i uh, say that element here i want its type to be float i change that type into float and then re-save it or save it in my new array so once i run this now all of those values are uh, placed here in a uh, much more standard and neater way so basically i got rid of those commas so once i have that now i can say okay uh, my new array the one i just created is what i want to work with so now i have this much nicer looking array that I can work with so now i have another example here i want to calculate the median of the stock prices so let's go ahead and do this first part first so I can simply use MP median and or uh, so it gives my give, gives me that answer or I could just simply have done the, this one I could have said um, my array dot median it would have given me the exact same value Um, so the array does not have the median uh, I'm sure it does have mean but not median there we go so it doesn't have median so sometimes you may get an error like just like I did so I learned about that and you might forget so um, I go back to what I had now this works I have the median but now I want to compare the standard deviation of prices that are lower than the median with the standard deviation of prices that are higher than the median. So to do this calculation, I need to uh, use Boolean masking. So Boolean masking allows me to keep all of those values that have smaller than median values. This is the Boolean mask. And then calculate the standard deviation for them. So the standard deviation of the lower ones is 15.7 and by changing this direction now i can calculate the standard deviations of the higher values and once i run that it's 20. and basically what does what it tells me is that um, after that median point um, there were more changes in the stock price before than the median it might give us some insight about how the stock how that specific stock, which is Apple in this example, has been.